The nuclear atom. Previously, we established that atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. The protons and neutrons comprise almost all the atom's mass and are found in the atom's exceedingly small nucleus. The electrons are within the atom, but outside the nucleus. They are much lighter and smaller than the nucleus. The mass and charge of subatomic particles, that is, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons are much heavier than electrons, almost 2,000 times heavier. The exact relative masses are right there. Neutrons are actually a little bit heavier than a proton, and they're both almost 2,000 times heavy as an electron. Protons and neutrons can be thought of as being stationary in the center of the atom forming its nucleus. The electrons move around the atom outside the nucleus. To show what the atom looks like, we're going to use this chart. Let's say the nucleus has a relative diameter of 1. That means it has a relative volume of 1, right? You just cube your radius. Uh, volume, of course, is 4 thirds pi r cubed. An electron, we're going to say, has very small diameter compared to nucleus, so it has a relative volume of 0. Now, the atom compared to the nucleus is 10,000 times as wide. Its diameter is 10,000 times the diameter of the nucleus. So its relative volume is 1 times 10 to the 3, 6, 9, 12th. Huge number. So the volume of the parts of the atom, right, the nucleus has a relative volume of 1, the electron almost 0, they're minuscule compared to the volume of the atom, which comes up with this. Atoms are mostly empty space. Since atoms are almost completely empty, there's nothing to keep the electrons and the nucleus apart. And the electrons and protons are opposite charges, so they attract. Classical physics could not explain how this nuclear atom could ever exist. Right, because here's a little nucleus here, and the electrons are all the way out here moving around, but they have a negative charge. Nucleus has a positive charge. Why didn't they attract each other and fall into each other? Perhaps the electrons orbit the nucleus, right over here, like planets orbit the sun. That kind of makes sense because Newton had figured out planetary orbits and Kepler and all those other fellows, so why can't electrons behave the same? However, if this were true, electrons would constantly be accelerating as they orbit the nucleus. So go back to your centripetal motion studies, and you can have a constant speed here, but you have acceleration because the direction of the velocity keeps changing. So you're accelerating the whole time. Now one thing about charges, when they accelerate, they will radiate energy in the form of light. So atoms would constantly be emitting light and losing energy. So this accelerating charge, which is radiating light, is also losing energy. All of the kinetic energy of the electron from its motion would be radiated away in about a billionth of a second. The electron would then fall into the nucleus. It would be attracted by the positive charge. All the atoms in the universe would collapse. So this is a rather dramatic name here, the death spiral of the electron. If you'd like to look at a simulation here, please click on this icon. Now, of course, atoms are stable. They don't collapse. That's why the universe exists. That's why we exist. However, with this model, if you have electrons constantly orbiting the nucleus, they would radiate energy and collapse in a billionth of a second. But we don't see it. Why not? Another problem with the model, atoms don't emit light most of the time. However, once again, if they were continuously orbiting the nucleus, they would radiate light continuously. This also is not observed. Why not? And by the way, we don't expect an answer here. We're just kind of following on with the problems of the nuclear model. When atoms do emit energy, it consists only of specific colors. Most colors are absent. Only narrow lines of color are observed. Why? So this top one is a continuous spectrum. So you might expect that the atom would emit all these colors, and you'd see a spectrum like that. But in fact, and here's a portion of the observed hydrogen spectrum, it only emits, this one has one, two, three, four, five lines. And of course, they have different colors matching the continuous spectrum, but you only have five very narrow lines that are being emitted.